It's the Games and Grabs podcast. This week, we discuss the Nintendo Switch and WWE's UK Championship Tournament. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 48 of the Games and Grabs podcast. I'm Sonny, and I'm one of your hosts, and with me, as always, is Finn Steele. Hello! Finn, how are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank you very much. Excellent. So, you may be able to tell by the intro, but we've changed the name of our podcast. Yes. Why, you may ask. Why? 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 (laughs) Didn't quite work. Basically, (laughs) we wanted you to know what we do straight off the bat. Yes. So, whereas before we were the Sonny and Finn show, people will be like, well... Who the hell are they? Exactly, (laughs) You're nuts. But now when you see our podcast on iTunes or SoundCloud or wherever you listen to it, you'll know that we talk about video games Mm -hmm. and the graphs. Yes. And Got if you're graps. joining us for the games aspect of it, the graps is professional wrestling. Yes. <laughs> now we've cleared that up, that's what we're going to be going forward. Mm-hmm. Finn, let's start the show as we always do. What are you playing at the minute? What have I been playing? Playing more Paper Mario uh, Color Splash, which is still awesome and hilarious. Uh, on the Wii U. Um, playing more Final Fantasy XV, obviously. Uh, it's more, more the same, really. Uh, more Overwatch. So today I bought Overwatch for the PC. Uh, we talked about this last week. I was, couldn't, I was umming and arming deciding. Um, yesterday, I had one amazing game of, of Overwatch, playing a Tracer, and then the rest of the day, it's utter garbage. I could not win a game for the life of me. On PC? On on console. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I was like, okay, something's good. I can't, I'm, something's wrong here. I need to mix it up, I need to change it up. So, I jumped onto PC. Um, and yeah, I played playing a bit today. Pretty good. Yeah, really, are you faring better? Yeah, I think so. I really know it's a difference. Especially when playing just like uh, Widowmaker or like Anna, Sniper Glasses. On console, I'd would, I would be crap. <laughs> I was crap at like, Sniper Glasses. Always have been. Uh, on PC, I'm actually doing quite well. I'm sniping people out of the sky and all sorts. It's like, okay, this is better. What are you using? An Xbox One controller? God, no. You can't... You can't. Xbox One controller? That's for me. On PC? God. I'm oh, sorry, I'm not uh, one of those... Uh, <laughs> mouse and keyboard. Not one of those PC nerds. You can't play first-person shooters, especially online multiplayer first-person shooters, with a keyboard on... Uh, with, with the controller on Keyboard PC. and mouse is for opening and closing <laughs> applications like Microsoft Word and... This is true. Normally, I'd agree with you in most games, but the online shooters, you need the keyboard and mouse. The accuracy is, is just way better. If you, if you tried to play with the controller online, you'd get destroyed. Okay. Yeah. There's no there's no like auto rain or anything like that like there is on console. I'm gonna take your word for it <laughs> as uh, a PC nerd. Hashtag PC Master Race. Yes. Don't <laughs> don't don't hashtag PC Master Race. <laughs> the gaming mule does that to me. Oh uh, yeah. And I call him a PC nerd. <laughs> yeah, so it's super it's only Overwatch I play. I used to play all the time on PC. Uh match consoles just because it's easier and cheaper. <laughs> I couldn't couldn't afford to upgrade on PC. Uh but Overwatch I don't know what Magic Blizzard uses on their games, but Overwatch runs super smooth on my PC, even though it's quite old. Um, and yeah, it's amazing. Okay. Like over, over, close to like 200 frames a second on like max settings. It's like, how are you doing this, Blizzard? <laughs> it's amazing. And Fair so enough. smooth. Uh, yeah. You say that um, Mario <clears throat> Color Splash is hilarious. Is that yes. intentional? Or? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. It's like, the writing is very clever. And the, it's like translations, all that a lot of work put into it to make it funny. Um, yeah, it's just so clever. It's one of the games I have to play to like get it, but, Fair enough. Yeah. And uh, how far into Final Fantasy fifteen are you now? Um, still not as far as I should be. <laughs> it's chapter six, seven, I think. Oh right, okay. So have you just been doing side missions and exactly, yeah. Oh okay. Playing other stuff, jumping, jumping in and out of Final Fantasy. I need a, I need a good period of time where I can just sink all my time into it. And yeah, I have to be honest. I thought I'd, uh, I thought you would be putting just a, a whole heap of time into it. <laughs> yeah. Now. Are you not doing so because you're not enjoying it as much as you thought you would? No. Or has your uh, gaming time been taken up with other things and that's just the reason? Um, yeah, pretty much taking up with other things and other games as well. I don't know. I don't know why I've not... I think I want to make it last as long as I can. <laughs> I don't I don't want to spend all my time on it and then it'd be gone and nothing else don't play, uh, want to play anymore. If that makes sense. It does make sense. But yeah. there's DLC it's and stuff mentality. coming, so it's not... Uh, <laughs> I think this is a game that's going to last you a while. Yeah, there is DLC. Um, so yeah, good stuff. But it's a good game. It's great, I love it. Okay. How about you? What have you been playing recently? I've had to write it down, because okay. the last week I just like went to shit when it came <laughs> to sort of, oh, what have you been playing? I was like, bleh. <laughs> bleh. Things. I've been it's... playing games. Uh, but no, I have. Um, I've been playing Gravity Rush. Oh, nice. Um, remember when I told you it would take me about a year... <laughs> 
to complete it. Yeah. Uh, well, I have actually started playing it, and I'm about halfway through. I really love it. Cool. Uh, I think it's excellent. I like Cat as a character. Um, I think it's very funny. The writing is very clever, mm-hmm. um, and it makes Cat <clears throat> come across as a very likable character. Uh, the mechanics are very cool when you do finally get to grips with it, because at first the um, the, the floating around and the traversal stuff is pretty <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Because yeah. the camera's like Different. all over the place and you're like, ooh, okay. It's going to take me a while to get used to this. But um, yeah, I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, I'm going to crack on and finish it. I'm hoping to sort of finish it by the end of this week. Awesome. So, uh, that's another game on my backlog I need to get through to. And that's Gravity Rush Remastered on PS4, by the way, not yes. the uh, Vita version. Cool. Um, I've been playing through Uncharted 3. Ah. Uh, I've been streaming it on Daydreamer Gaming. Awesome. Um, I'm about, I don't know, maybe six hours into it. Um, I love it still. It's excellent. Oh, yeah. Great game. I still think Uncharted 2 is better. A lot of people are under, uh, you know, give out the impression that Uncharted 3 is the best of the series, or at least the PlayStation 3 trilogy, but I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I can't have that. <laughs> Uncharted 2 is the best one. Yeah. It's been too long since I played them to really make a decision, but yeah, I think two. I'm I'm assuming me for these special. Don't get me wrong. I mean, three is great. Oh, and yeah. I can't wait to get to the bit with with the plane. Um, this isn't spoilers now. You've had all, <laughs> You've had all the, the time, time. <laughs> in the world to play these games, and they've been so cheap in the sale recently as well. You've literally got no excuse. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to the bit with the plane. I'm looking forward to riding the horse again in the desert, oh, yeah. just to experience it all on PS4 and see how they've upgraded the visuals for the sand and all that sort of stuff. So, cool. but I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's just a superb game. I don't really need to talk about Uncharted because it's Uncharted. Yeah, everybody knows. <laughs> um, been playing a bit of WWE 2K17 on yeah. and off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's a game. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> um, I find it better when I'm not doing anything specific on it. Like when I don't go into universe mode and things aren't <laughs> going the way I want. I'm just like, oh, oh fuck this. I don't want to play this game. Dumb game, bro. Stupid game. Um, I'm not playing career mode because it's boring. Um, but when I go on and just like pick a couple of random wrestlers and have matches, I actually find it quite enjoyable. Cool. Um, we're going to play it a bit later on. We are. going to settle the uh, 2016 bets. Yes, finally. In mm-hmm. a uh, showdown. I propose uh, two out of three. Okay, two out of three falls match? Yes. Not a two out of three falls match. Two out oh, of th- so like, the best of three. Okay. So, uh, Sounds good. Yeah, three matches. First of two wins. All right. Works for me. Okay. And uh, finally, I've been playing uh, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Mega Morphin Battle time. on PlayStation 4. And nice. I like it. Yeah? Yeah, it's good. I mean, it it's an 11.99 game. Cheap. And it's it's a 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up. And I like it. It works Sweet. well. There are things that I would change. Okay. Um, no checkpoints is Ooh. fucking brutal. Probably old school. <laughs> it <laughs> is, seriously. <laughs> I think they should have probably included... Like a, an old school 2D side scrolling beat 'em up mechanic of if you die, you fall out of the sky and you get another chance. Oh, did they even do that? No. Wow. You harsh. die, you are back to the beginning of the level. That is harsh. <laughs> yeah, because I was streaming it yesterday and I got to the end, no, I nearly at the end of um, one of the bits in level in chapter two and I died and I had to go all the way back to the start and I was like, no, 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 no. Nope. No. <laughs> I, I'm done. I'm done for today because that is irritating. But uh, so, yeah, that I would change. Uh, moving whilst. Uh, engaged in com- in combat mm-hmm. but that is very old school as well so if like you, you're stopping while you're punching and kicking oh, okay. very Streets of Rage 2-ish yeah yeah but it's uh, it's Power Rangers it's cool to see Power Rangers Mighty Morphin Power Rangers especially Mighty Morphin um, Power Ranger good I can't help it um, <laughs> re-imagined for uh you know, and re-put out there for a new generation of people. And I think that's pretty cool. Awesome. And uh, it takes from the first two series of the Power Rangers original series. So, uh, that's very good. Yeah, I that's like it a lot. Classic. I love it. Yeah. I used to love uh, Power Rangers back in the day. Yeah. I mean, the, the trophy list is garbage. Is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, all all bronze, bronze trophies. Come on. Gosh. Yeah. Come on. Especially given that there's no checkpoints. Oof. You need to be a bit more <laughs> smart with that trophy list. Yeah. He's At least one golden there. Come on. give us a, 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 a silver... And a gold. Even if you just put, you know, no platinum, fine. Okay, fine. <laughs> it's an eleven ninety nine game. Uh, but at least give us a silver and a platinum. Uh, sorry, a silver and a gold. Yeah. Be kind to us. Even Monopoly has a silver and a gold. It does. <laughs> oh, yeah, we played Monopoly. Yes, we played Monopoly, yeah. Uh, together, um, as the Daydreamers on uh, the Daydreamer YouTube channel. Yes, the fellow Daydreamer Litiga. Yep. 
Fun times. And it was and a good the, time. Do you remember who won that? I can't, I can't remember who yeah, won that. Yeah, the worst uh, loser in the history... Sorry, the worst winner in the history of winners. Oh, yeah? Who, who was that? Yeah, that was you. Oh, yeah. That's why I did win that. Yeah, I, yeah. I put it down to poor trading <laughs> on my part, and I put it down to uh, Griff being in the comments helping you out. He wouldn't help me. He, would, he <laughs> was helping you out. He refused to help um, me. Yeah, towards the end, when it was <laughs> yeah. clear that you were going to win. <laughs> but... Um, it was good fun, though. I mean, I would definitely, so <laughs> um, I definitely, I'm interested in going back. Definitely and a couple too. of the daydreamers have expressed interest in joining us. So, oh, cool, uh, awesome. They're they're all going to pick it up and uh, make them buy that My Little Pony DLC, so yeah. we can all play that together. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> um, let's talk about one of the big items from this past week in gaming. Yes. Uh, the Nintendo Switch has Ooh. been revealed finally, officially, Ooh. and we have a release date. And we have a price, and we have uh, launch titles, and there's some third-party stuff as well that's been announced, and some other releases that are going to be scattered across the year. Finn, tell us about Hello. the Nintendo Switch. Um, where to start? So, it, obviously, it's a portable and a, a home console, all in one. Um, it has, like, motion controls into little Joy-Cons. Um, it has, like, HD Rumble, they called it. It's like a Fancy Pants Rumble feature. Um Apparently in the game 1-2-Switch, which they also announced, there's some fun mini games you can do with that. Like one of them is milking a cow, and apparently you can like feel the milk coming through through the controller, it feels like. Sorry? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean you can feel the milk coming through the controller? It, it's hard to describe. It's the way it was described to me. It was like the way that... I don't know. I don't, please, I don't, please be careful how you <laughs> phrase this. I know that we've talked about VR porn, uh, and, and we have been fairly uncouth. Just, but for people who may be new to our podcast... Now that um, we're called something else, <laughs> phrase it in a way that's not going to make us sound completely weird. I don't know why I picked the uh, milk and the cow one. Well, <laughs> I know why. You, it's just one that it just it just resonates with you. It speaks to you in a, on a personal level, Finn. Yeah, something personally came to my mind. Um, but yeah, apparently with the rumble and it, like, it makes it feel like there's something coming through the controller, like as if you're milking a cow's udder. I guess <laughs> never done that myself personally. <laughs> you but, come uh, close to it. Well, yeah. Wait, what? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so that sounds weird, but it also sounds interesting weird. at the same time. Yeah, it's, it's a one-two switch. It's basically a multiplayer party game, uh, which entirely focuses on, I thought I can tell, the Rumble features. Don't, you don't even need TV to look at. You're just looking at each other, two people playing the game. Oh, really? One controller each, and not play many games. One, one of them's t- table tennis, but you don't see the ball. You just have to gauge by the sounds and from the from the Rumble in the controller. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how that works, but... Well, it sounds interesting. It's classic Nintendo yeah, yeah, yeah. to bring a uh, a party game game out yes. um, with its new console, just so they can test out what new crazy <laughs> features they've yeah. got on their uh, I, I controllers. Agreed. One thing they should have done, like they should, what they, like they did with Wii Sports, they should have had it included, have it included with the console, but they're not. They're sending it separately. It's like a forty quid game, which is a bit weird. I imagine they'll be. Maybe a bundle like there was with Nintendo Land, because Nintendo Land didn't That's come true. with all. Did all? Did it come with all Wii U's actually? I'm not sure actually. Maybe. I'm not sure. I mean, can't be. No, I can't remember either. One, once you look up for next week. Sure. Uh-huh. But yeah, they should. They should definitely come included. I reckon with all their switches. Just because, just because, like you said, it's new technology. It needs some needs something to show off. Mm. But uh, I don't know. It's weird. It looks interesting. Yeah. Um, I'm. I have. I do have one pre-ordered, but I pre-ordered one a while ago. Yeah. Um. I just hope it's good. I mean, yeah. if I'm being honest, I don't see this doing much better than the Wii U. What this mm. will have in its favour, however, is the fact that it can be used as a handheld. Now, I don't know if Nintendo sees this as a long-term replacement for the 3DS. Yes. And that, if it is, then and that's going to be the only Nintendo handheld on the market if they sort of discontinue um, the 3DS and stop making software for it, then maybe it will succeed on that level. But from a home console standpoint, I mean, it's never going to touch the likes of the PS4, not even the Xbox One. Um, They're in a unique position at the minute. Uh, As you say, if they they stop with the 3DS stuff, then maybe. But it's really something, it's quite quite big, even when it's like detached from the home thing. So Mm. do you want to be looking at it around with you all the time? Well, that's it. I mean, uh, the 3DS, I mean, you can get your portable cases and stuff that stuff like that for it. And I'm yeah, sure yeah. you will be able to sort of carry a little tablet around in a in a carry case that Nintendo will charge you the earth for. But, <laughs> yeah. We'll uh, carry, around, carry around like little Joy-Con controllers, which you can no doubt lose at some point. 
I would. And they <laughs> are expensive to replace. Yeah, absolutely. But you you are right in saying that Nintendo are in a unique situation at the mm. minute. It, I mean, if this fails, then it's time to give up making consoles. <laughs> I mean, the, the Wii U didn't do well. I mean, the Wii, the original Wii was just a fucking astronomical <laughs> success. Yeah. But the Wii U... Firstly, it was confusing with its name. Yeah, even though I was confused when they first announced it with the first announcement trailer. They didn't even announce that it was a console. They just showed up the controller. Yeah. And I was like, even I was like, wait, so is it a new console or is it yeah. a controller or what? And it, it just wasn't explained well. I think, I mean, it, it definitely didn't do enough to entice casual Wii owners to upgrade. Yeah, seriously. Um, I mean, I do like it as a console. Yeah, me too. And there's some really good games on there, mm-hmm. which are unfortunately underplayed because of the install base. Yeah, shame. But uh, yeah, if this flops, and I'm afraid for it at this point. Yes. Um, I mean that launch lineup isn't good. No, it's literally like five games. Yeah, <laughs> I mean what is uh, Just Dance 2017? Mm-hmm. Um, Zelda. Yeah, Zelda, of course, uh, which is the big one, which is mainly the reason why people will buy it on launch for that. A true, but it is also coming out on the Wii U as well, so some people might just hold off and get the Wii version. I think, yeah. Maybe. Um, there's Bomberman R. Yeah, weird one. Which is an interesting one. I haven't seen a Bomberman game in a while. <laughs> yeah, I love I love uh, Bom- Mega Man and the Mega Drive, <laughs> but I uh, haven't played one since then. I think there was a Bomberman on the 360, which was pretty cool. Oh, yeah, I do, actually, yeah. We did that. Um, is that boxing one one as well? Um. Arms, that one, that's yeah. coming out spring, apparently. Spring 2017. Okay. Um, so what have we got? So we've got Just Dance, mm-hmm. Bomberman, one, yep. Zelda. One, yep. 1-2 one, Switch. 1-2 Switch. And Skylanders Imaginators. Right, so that's mm. been out as well. So these, yeah. the, the, there's games here that are being launched with the, a brand new console that you can already get. Um, I mean, then you, there, it does sort of have a like a, it's like a red graph, isn't there, with uh, stuff that's coming out. Oh, yeah, yeah. What they should have done, in my opinion, is waited until Mario was ready to go. Yeah, I agree. Is it Super Mario Odyssey? Um, yes. Or is it just called Mario Odyssey? Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah, and it looks really great. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, but I think they should have launched the console then. Yeah. People would have been happy for them to re-release Zelda. I mean, look at the PS4 and the <laughs> yeah. games that have been re-released, like The Last of Us and, you know, the Uncharted Collection and God of War 3, Gravity Rush. All, you know, all these games have been released before, but people were happy to play them again on a newer console. Yeah. And people would have been happy to wait for Zelda. Yeah, especially probably. if you already had a Wii U. Because I mean, yep. if you wanted to play Zelda that badly, you would have a Wii U because it exactly. was promised ages ago. Yeah, exactly. Um, what do you think? What, how how do you feel about this? I mean, um, let's talk about the price as well. Actually, so it's two seven nine nine nine. Yes, no games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, price wise, probably about what I, what I was expecting. Yeah, I thought um, two fifty. Yeah, thought that kind of price range. Um, it's sucks. It sucks. That there's no game coming out. Like with it, like I said, with one two switch, it's a shame that's not included. Um, and yeah, launch line it isn't great. Like as you said, Zelda's the only game I'd be interested in. Um, maybe yeah. one man if it's any good, but I don't know. Uh, and it's fairly vague as well as to when the other games are actually coming out. There's, I mean, mm. spring is vague. <laughs> yeah, spring mm. Splatoon two has summer twenty seventeen. Um, it's Fire Emblem Warriors, which is late twenty seventeen. Pokemon, well, Pokemon Stars have been out yet, but uh, Super Mario Odyssey is holiday 2017. Uh, Blade Chronicles 2 is uh, TBC still. So that's amazing. a Wii U game, it. isn't it? That's out already on the Wii U. Uh, no. Or is that the E3 DS one? Uh, so so Blade Chronicles was on the Wii, original Wii, and then it re-released it on the 3DS, or new 3DS, and then Xenoblade Chronicles X, which is a Wii U game. Ah, okay. Yeah. So Xenoblade like... Chronicles 2 is a whole new game. Yes. Okay. It looks amazing, I want it. I love Xenoblade Chronicles. <laughs> so but that's the thing. They're, they're being so vague with the release dates and, and stuff like that. We don't actually know, aside from the launch titles, we don't actually know when anything is coming. And now, I'm, I'm of course, these things are, are going to become more clearer when the release date approaches. But for a launch console, this is a little bit sketchy. It is a bit. There's also been some uh, uh, third-party third third party titles announced. And I can't, I can't talk. <laughs> third-party. Are you that excited about the, I am. I'm the so excited Nintendo Switch. Switch that you can't talk? I, exactly, that's it. The th- 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 a third party titles th- announced for the Nintendo Switch. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we have I Am Tetsuna, which is the game that's already out on PS4 yep. and everywhere else. Uh, Fast RMX. Shrug. Sorry? I have no idea. Okay. Um, has Been Heroes. Again, don't know. Yep, nope. Rhyme. 
Spelled R I M E. That's already out, I think. Oh, is it? Okay. I think so. Don't quote me on it, but I think it's uh, already out somewhere. I've heard of it. Okay, cool. Uh, Binding, of, Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus, which is already out. Yep. Uh, this Guy of Five Complete, already out. Lego Titty Undercover, already out. Because that was a Wii U game. It was, yeah. Uh, and a Wii U exclusive, which is also coming to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One the same time that it comes out on the Switch. Yep, yep. We have Poyo Poyo Tetris, which actually looks pretty good. Um, it's been out in Japan forever, but. Hasn't been out over here yet, as far as I know. Uh, Sonic Mania, which is coming out everywhere on everything. Um, Skyrim, <laughs> which <laughs> it might be anyone. I don't know. Wow. Yeah, no, it definitely is. It's, <laughs> it's going to be Skyrim remastered, isn't it? Uh, yeah, probably. Um, NBA Two K Eighteen. Fine. It's good that they're getting those games. Yeah. Because at least you're speaking to um, um, a portion of people who do want to play the sports, but don't want to, but do at the same time want to play Mario and Zelda and can't afford all the consoles. Exactly. Uh, the new Sonic game, it's I didn't have a title yet. Um, it's coming out in 17. Is that going to be a Nintendo 17. exclusive? Like, um... uh, no, it's coming out and everything. Oh, right. It was announced ages ago. Oh, of course. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. We have Shovel Knight, which has been out forever. Jesus. And it's amazing. It's uh, amazing, yeah. Wonder Boy, The Dragon's Trap. Um, <laughs> yeah. Is that, uh, I guess maybe that's a, um, what do you call it? A uh, virtual console game. Guess maybe. When there was an old, 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 old game. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Well, like... FIFA's coming out. FIFA's coming to uh, oh, the, yeah, uh, the Switch. Oh, yeah, boy here as well. Uh, Dragon Quest 10 and 11. Uh, Dragon Quest Heroes 1 and 2, which is out on PS4. Uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse, which is out already. Well, the original one? Uh, no, 2. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, FIFA 8 is out. Farming Simulator. Ooh. <laughs> Minecraft Story Mode, Rayman Legends, what the out? God, out. really? Yep, yep. Um, Stardew Valley, which is out. Yep. Uh, new Shin Megami Tensei, yay! That's new. That's good for me. And nobody else. Um, <laughs> Steep. Yeah, already out. Yep, yep. But there's no release date for that either, and I think that would be back end of the year. Probably. See, the problem is here is obviously we've just reeled off a bunch of games, but a lot of them. Sorry, <laughs> Street Fighter Two. Oh, God, don't <laughs> get me started on Street Fighter 2. I tweeted about it the other day, I do, and honestly, yeah. like, the mentions were coming back, like, almost instantly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we've just reeled off a ton of games there, and a lot of them have already been released, uh, and are being released, sorry, or are being released on PS4 and Xbox One simultaneously with a Switch release. Um, I don't know, man. I think, I do fear, I fear for it already. And that, that's not a good thing. I mean, I do want one, and I am going to st- uh, keep my pre-order. Cool. I just don't want it to do what my PlayStation VR is currently doing. Gathering dust. And that is sitting there and doing nothing. Yes. Because, I mean, the Switch is an interesting premise. I like the idea of it. I like the look of it. Um, I probably will never carry it around with me. You yes, same. Too expensive. Uh, I mean, I don't need <laughs> commuting anyway, but there is that. It's £279 worth of kit. Yeah. Uh, um. If you, imagine losing half of that Joy-Con controller and then you come home and you want to play Zelda and you're like, ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. <laughs> that would ah. suck. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, I'll reserve my judgment until it's here and we know, you know, when games are coming and stuff like that. But uh, the virtual console stuff looks promising. Yeah. I say that, but all I saw was that uh, Pokemon Stadium was announced <laughs> for it. And that for me is good enough. Uh, yeah. Um, to be fair, there's a lot of games that are already out on Wii U or Wii Virtual Console. Um, so, yeah. A lot of stuff that's still the same as it always was. So, I mean, it's coming out March 3rd. Yeah. And that's very soon. So it doesn't give people a lot of time to (laughs) save up should they need to save up for it. Yes. Um, We will, of course, start to hear more about the games and release dates soon. But um, for something that's brand new and has a lot of hype behind it, I don't think the launch is the best. No, it could be better. For sure. Unless there's some, like little stuff which they haven't announced coming with it. Yeah, but that's the thing. Why don't Nintendo entice people to to buy the Switch with this stuff? If you know this yeah. stuff is coming, I mean, this is less than two months away. Yeah, I mean, we are what six weeks away from the uh, the launch of the Switch. <laughs> wow. Six weeks. Six weeks. Blimey. Uh, and all we know is that the price, the date, and the launch lineup. Yeah. And there's other stuff coming. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, okay. So just tell us. <laughs> other stuff. Uh, just be just be more forthcoming with information. Yeah. And you you will make people like me worry much less. 
Yes. Um, Good luck, Nintendo. Because I've mentioned PlayStation VR, mm-hmm. um, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Are you worried about the current state of PlayStation VR? Um, a little bit, yeah. To be honest. Um, I'm looking forward to Resident Evil 7 next week. Yeah. Um, look forward to my Let's Play of that coming soon um, in VR. Um, other than that, it's not really much on the horizon with PlayStation VR that I've seen. There's these little indie games that come out every now and again, which are cool. Like Brookhaven looks really good. And a couple of other things, like Job Simulator is amazing. Mm. Um, but other than that, I'm not, not sure where they're going with it. But that's the problem. There's not a lot of chatter about it. Yeah. And there it doesn't seem to be, apart from Resident Evil 7, anything big coming out. Mm. The games that I were excited about, uh, like Robinson the Journey, is apparently a shit fest and Pants. will make you terribly sick. Yeah. Um, I've had a lot of fun with it. Batman was phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, Job Simulator was excellent. And, you know, I love Headmaster and stuff like that. But, and I have played the Resident Evil 7 demo in VR, like I said last week, and that is awesome. Yep. But what is there beyond that? The chatter has very much stopped. And, you know, the fact that the uh, PSX press conference, they, all they did was a sizzle reel, showed games that were coming, but didn't actually give, (laughs) <laughs> titles to those games yeah. or any indication when they were coming and that to me is concerning because I feel like we're in Vita territory with it already yeah I think you might be right there um, that is worrying yeah it's lack of support from like AAA developers because obviously got the Capcom with Resident Evil but no other AAA games coming out for it that I can think of right now um, Resident Evil is going to be a, a big tell for PlayStation VR yeah because a lot of stuff I see online is just people saying, I don't know, that how ill they get while playing it and stuff like that. It's like not overly positive. Like before it came out, there's lots of positivity about it. Then everyone, it came out, everyone played it and like, oh, I feel ill. We were like, um, oh, Batman was really cool and awesome. I mean, that's what I'm going to show off to my friends. But, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I mean, mine is sitting there now. I played the Resident Evil demo and the Star Wars um, add-on. Oh, yeah. And I was like, yeah, cool. Yeah. And then, But now, I, but I've not, there's so many actual games to play that I don't feel like I have to put the VR headset on, which is a shame because I really do believe in the technology and I think it's excellent. It's very cool. But I'm worried for it already. Yeah. To the we point just... where I'm thinking, do I just cash in on it now? <laughs> and, you know, when it does go down the path, I can go, well, I, I knew it was coming. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's a cool, it's a cool, cool bit of tech to have, I think. Um, But... Yeah, I don't think it's sold all that well as well. Hmm. I think there were stock issues. I mean, at least that's what, you know, the the gaming media or so, or what's coming from Sony will have you believe. Yeah. So I guess if you're a game developer, you can't justify spending all that money making a new game, a new VR game, if there's no, no one's going to buy it, if not, no one there to play it. Well, this is where we step into Vita territory. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, some, uh, I don't know if you saw it, but uh, Guerrilla Cambridge got shut down. Oh, yeah. They made Killzone Mercenary, which is, Absolutely excellent, um, but that's probably their, you know, their best game in well a long time. And now Sony have shut them down. Yeah, and it's like, well, they've made one of the best Vita games. It's like probably in top ten best Vita games. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's excellent. Have you not played it? Nope. No, it's really good. <laughs> um, but they've not really done anything since. So if that was their last big project, and it was a Vita game that didn't sell all that well, despite it being excellent. Yeah. What motivation does that give to other studios to make a Vita game? And you can say that about PlayStation VR. So, um, yeah, sure. I mean, Batman VR would have sold a ton. Job Simulator would have sold a ton. Yeah. Uh, but they're cheap games. Yeah. They're not, uh, so. I um, imagine... Oh, they made rigs. There you go. Oh, yeah. They made rigs. Gorilla Cambridge made rigs. Wow. All of a sudden, they're gone. They're gone. Yikes. Bad sign. <laughs> Uh, um, Riggs was a £50 game out of the bat. Yeah, that was a mistake. It should have been cheaper. Oh. 50 quid. 50 quid for a multiplayer VR game. For and, untested nope. tech as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, obviously, with us not being... I mean, obviously, you're a PC nerd because you've got Overwatch. <laughs> One but, game. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but with me being like a console person, not playing Oculus or trying the Vive or anything like that, I didn't know what I was getting into. So we, yeah, I mean, we yeah. bought this tech, but there was no way I wanted to buy a £60 game with it. Exactly, yeah. So you know, Batman was £15, and it's like the mo- one of the most impressive games of last year. Yeah, yeah. Job Simulator was £15 or whatever it was. Yeah, great But game. it was cheap enough for you to be able to justify. It's like, oh, I'm going to buy... If, if I'd have bought rigs... I mean, I tried the demo for rigs. So if I'd have pre-ordered rigs, I'd have been 
I'd have been so it'd have been traded in straight away. <laughs> yeah, it's not a bad game. I just can't play it because of the motion sickness aspect of it. That's a shame. Yeah, need to figure out that the Resident Evil uh, Capcom's gonna, gonna done a good job with Resident Evil, I think, with the motion sickness stuff, with the way you turn, you can, like turn in like from thirty degree angles, which works really well. Um, but yeah, need need more need more work on that, I think, because I was playing um Super Stardust, um VR mode, Invasion mode, I think it's called, um, and that's good for like. 30 minutes <laughs> any longer than that and then you're going to start feeling uh, going to stop being sick because it's just like yeah. it's too much <laughs> I mean it's, it's, it is awesome for experiences like Super Hypercube which is excellent oh yeah that's cool too and uh, Thumper which I really like uh, Until Dawn Rush of Blood is it, again it's probably fine for 45 minutes or so and then yeah then stop it <laughs> it's a tough one because I again I like like the Switch but I'm worried about it hmm but, I mean, yeah. and I was a firm believer of it when you know before it came out. Yeah, um, you know, on launch, I was like, we were we were banging the drum for it. Yeah, yeah. But two months on, and that's all it's been. I think. I think so. Two or three months. Long. October. Uh, yeah, yeah October. Months. So two or three months, whatever. Three yeah. four months. Um, we're starting to sort of question its future already, and that is <sighs> not a good sign. Yes. But we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully we're wrong and it turns around and it's some amazing games for it. But sure. we'll see. I mean, I mean, oh, of course. I mean, I want everything to succeed. I'm always yeah, yeah. like that. I don't want, I don't want game studios to close down. <laughs> no, I, no. I want games to sell loads so that you know they can keep making great games and stuff like that. But we're in a climate now where there's a people like what they like. You have the fanboys for the Xbox. You have the fanboys for the PlayStation. Yeah, PC nerds. And then you have your Nintendo people who just love Mario and Zelda. Yeah. So people are going to go to what they like and not buy everything. And True. Um, it's it's a worrying time for developers uh, and hardware makers alike. Yes, especially with the new te- new untested technology. Yeah. Because um, I, I, I do believe if the Switch doesn't do what uh, Nintendo want it to do, I think that could be their last console. Hmm. Could not. be their Dreamcast. <laughs> yeah. I have not. We'll see. But it won't be as good as the Dreamcast because the Dreamcast <laughs> is fucking brilliant. Dreamcast pretty excellent, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ah, oh, the Dreamcast. Ah, memories. Maybe we should do a Dreamcast podcast. <laughs> just a one off, just so we can uh, sit here and just rub ourselves with delight. <laughs> yeah. How awesome the Dreamcast was. Yeah, definitely. We'll get Steve on here as well because uh, he loved the Dreamcast too. We used to play couch multiplayer all the time. Oh, awesome. Classic Virtua Tennis. Yeah. Ready to rumble boxing. We should do like a Dreamcast week or Dreamcast month or something. We just yes, we absolutely <laughs> should. Stream Dreamcast games, talk about Dreamcast in the podcast. That'd be cool. You know what we could call the uh, the podcast? What's that? Go on. Come on. Dream, dream games and Dreamcast grabs. Hey. Oh, <laughs> we could just call it the Dreamcast. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, Dreamcast. There oh. you go. There's your... T- yeah. Oh, Finn. You did it. You you, I, ru- I you ruined it. I did. I did. I failed it a bit. You did. <laughs> a Dreamcast. I get it. Finally, you get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dreamcast was fucking excellent. Yes, it was. <clears throat> Let's talk about graps. Okay. Do we have to? We <laughs> can talk about the good part of the oh, graps. Yeah, we do, we'll we'll skim through the crap stuff. part of the graps. Yeah. And... Yeah, but we need to talk about it with the Games and Graps podcast. Of course, yeah. I'm just going to second. Um, so, of course, UK, Jam- UK Championship tournament happened. Um, and it was really bloody good. God, it was excellent. A good good, good couple of nights of Graps. Excellent couple of nights of Graps. Yeah. Now, uh, the UK Championship tournament is just so big for British wrestling. And it was just an awesome showcase. And it was just a great production all around, I thought. Oh, yeah. Like, so, even Michael Cole was excellent. <laughs> he was. He pulled it out. Well, it's Michael. like maybe just put Michael Cole on NXT and have him just yeah. just enjoy himself. Like, exactly. He sounded like he was genuinely enjoying himself, and he was talking about how he'd watched people like Wolfgang, whether he had or not, is another thing, of course. But <laughs> he was like, "Oh, I've watched Wolfgang, and this is easily one of his best matches, and all this sort of stuff." And he was genuinely excited. Yeah, I thought Nigel McGuinness did a fantastic job alongside him. Yep, and it just felt like a really exciting time. To be a British wrestling fan. Yes. Because definitely. all eyes were on British wrestling. Yeah. It's very cool. Very cool. Very, very cool. Um, Tyler Bate was the overall winner. Yes. Which well I didn't see coming at all. No, same. Um, He's like... Going into the tournament, I mean, I think after the first round, I thought, 
he's he's a fan favorite yeah um and i think he's got he's got a great look and he's a definite project for wwe to 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 mold into a big superstar for the future i for mean sure. he's, he's 19 years old I mean, yeah, which is incredible. ridiculous to me yeah i know it's just insane well, I was, I was, what was I doing at 19? Uh, well, the call center with you. Yeah. Sure, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Blimey. Um, but yeah, it was one of the, one of the lesser known guys going in as well. It's like, no, I don't think anyone really knew who he was like big time, but he like in one, in like two nights, he got super over. Yeah. And became the favorite. It's like amazing. And it was amazing just work. unbelievable. I mean, I had Pete Dunne and um, Trent Seven to be the finalists. Good choices. Um, to be honest, I was glad to be proven wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because, you don't, you don't want it to be predictable. It's like the CWC. Yeah. Like, I, I you know, fully expected Zack Sabre Jr. and Kota Ibushi to be the finalists. Mm. Um, and, of course, they weren't. But I, th- I, ex- I did expect Dunn and Trent Seven being the two, maybe the most um, known out of the, you know, out of both sides of the bracket. Yeah, I think so. But, I, you know, I'm pl- pleasantly surprised because there, there was guys that I didn't know in there uh, particularly well. Yeah, same. And I just... I really enjoyed watching wrestling again. Yes. Especially a WWE product. I should rephrase that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I, I did watch Wrestle Kingdom and I thought it was excellent. Yeah, same. But watching a WWE product has been fairly painful recently. <laughs> yeah. Um, which, um, I, which you will hear us talk about very shortly. But um, this was this was really exceptional. And I hope that it goes somewhere. I mean, that final match between Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate was just absolutely incredible. Yeah. Pete Dunne is an amazing heel. I love him. Superb so, so heel. And it looks like, I think um, if WWE do go ahead and uh, produce a weekly show out of this country, they should. I think Pete Dunne is going to be a major player in it. Yep, absolutely. Uh, you could tell just by the way that obviously he uh, attacked um, his, his second round opponent. Yep. And Sam Blackwell, I want to say. Gradwell. Sam. Gradwell, sorry. Yes. My apologies. <laughs> Sam Gradwell. That's the one. Um, just, to, just to close out the first night of uh, wrestling, you just thought, yeah, we've got cool. big plans for him. And then he was all over WWE social media, showing him sort of backstage, being confronted by Triple H and William Regal and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought it, just, it built his character in one night for people who weren't aware of him. Yes, definitely. And But for them to put on that match, um, I thought it was excellent and it's an absolute match of the year candidate already and we're only in january oh uh, yeah seriously unbelievable so so good superb back and forth told a, an unbelievable story yes. like the rise of an underdog against the cocky veteran heel i say veteran <laughs> pete dunn is 23 years old <laughs> wow um how is this talent like <laughs> right under our noses i know right uh amazing um absolutely incredible amazing weekend for british wrestling um just I'm I'm over the moon for all of those guys, and I think they all did a fantastic job. Yes, all of them did amazing. Um, we've Isn't got to talk, it... we've got to talk about the chants as well, which were just incredible. Oh, the fans were super. <laughs> that, fans we've amazing. got the best fans in the world here. It's seriously, um, like uh, poor Jordan Devlin, who is essentially <laughs> uh, Finn Balor Jr. with a bigger, with a saved head. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the chants were. I think one of them was. Um, your head's too big for you. Or yeah, your head's too big for you, and of course the the big one. You're just a shit Finn. Oh Bella. yeah, <laughs> which to be fair, he's yeah. a lot like Finn Balor. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say, say, say shit or anything. I would say he's very oh, good. I'm, I'm but, sure he's a very talented young man, but he comes out with the uh, the leather jacket. He's got the same beard, same haircut, yeah, same mannerisms, everything. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he's from the same. In fact, he's from the same place. Yeah, I mean, this is the one with you're gonna mold yourself up to someone. Well, Finn Balor, he's excellent. Of course, but. Uh, yeah, well, it's had a weird ending to the first match as well because um, who was it? Danny Birch got cut open on the back of his head, um, and then the referee counted three, and then he kicked, he kicked out. It's like, uh, was that supposed to happen? Well, that's the thing. Devlin's reaction was like, "Oh, he's kicked out," but I think they ended that match because of the blood coming from the back of Danny Birch's head. Yeah, the ref might have seen it and thought, "Oh, nope." Can't Which stop. is a shame. <laughs> I mean, I, th- I definitely would have won that match anyway. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so it's a shame they had to end it that way because I thought yeah. Danny Birch was doing an awesome job. Yeah, Danny Birch is great. Um, I thought it was funny how they kept saying from NXT fame, but I think he's only had like maybe <laughs> two one or, or two matches. matches. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think it's for the American fans who maybe don't follow the the British graps. Yeah. Um, what's had uh, Saxon Huxley, aka Jesus. <laughs> God, <laughs> let's go, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus sucks. <laughs> which was just. It summed us up as a country, <laughs> this how little fucks we give about anything. Yeah, seriously. 
who can we offend? <laughs> Everybody. Uh, hey, hey, Jesus. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I want to know if you'll be my God. Um, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, like I said, the whole thing was just absolutely superb. The uh, the Empress Ballroom is it the Empress Ballroom? Oh yes, yeah. The Empress Ballroom in Blackpool is a, a grand place to hold graps as well. Yes, very cool. Um, what I want to mention? Oh, Joseph, Joseph Connors was cool. He had, he's from uh, it's all sorts of things, but I've seen more recently from WCPW, he's more former WCPW champion. Um. His finisher was a bit nerfed in WWE Day. Unless like an awesome looking DDT, which is called which he calls the Righteous Kill DDT. But it's kind of a bit too dangerous for WWE maybe. So it kind of made it into like a I don't know, like a slapjack kind of thing. It's like a uh, a complete shot or a flatliner. Yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Um it's yeah, it's fine. It's WWE. What can you do? Sure. Um But yeah, cool to see him in there. And uh Oh yeah, so first first final match of the night, uh Tyler versus Tuck uh Tyler Bate versus Tucker. Uh didn't know who really these guys were to start with, um, but ended up a big fan of both of them. Hope to see more of them, more than both. Uh, talk about the hell of a super kick. <laughs> like kicked him right out of the ring. Amazing. Super duper kick. Super duper kick. Um, probably the match of the first night, for sure. Well, I think Tyler Bate had the best matches of the uh, the weekend on both both matches to close out Yeah, yeah. as well. Definitely. So um, if you haven't seen it and we've just spoiled it for you, well, <laughs> where have you been? Yes, yeah, seriously. You should have been watching it. When it was uh, when it was originally aired, um, but go back and watch it. It was really, really good. I'm I'm gonna go back and watch it, watch the whole thing again because it was awesome. But yeah, unbelievable. Yes, great, great, weekend, great lovely. showcase for uh, the British graps. Yes, excellent. I'm intrigued to see what's next. Obviously, we have no idea what's next. We know that <laughs> yeah. Tyler Bay is the uh, WWE United Kingdom champion. Mm-hmm. Very first. But what happens next? Yes. We'll see. Will he move to NXT? Will he come to War Smackdown? Or will he be on his own show? I mean, I don't think he'll come to... I mean, because he's going to need to defend that title. Yeah. You can't just drag everybody over here. Yeah. That's why I think it'd be good business and smart by WWE to maybe have uh, a touring show like NXT is over there. Yeah. Here. That'd be cool. It'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to see how it affects the indie scene in this country. Yes. Um... We'll see, but we'll see. Um, I, I'm I'm just I'm excited to see what happens next, and hopefully we'll find out soon. Yes, um, isn't it funny that the stuff that WWE does outside yeah. of Raw and SmackDown is just excellent? <laughs> yeah, like the Cruiserweight Classic was absolutely outstanding. Yep, NXT is very consistently awesome. Yep, very good. The um, UK Championship Tournament was excellent, mm-hmm. and I'm almost certain that this women's tournament they've got coming up is going to be excellent as well. Probably, but then. We move on to Raw. Let's talk about Raw this week. Um, <laughs> I've not really seen much of either show this week, which is bad considering we do a podcast <laughs> about it. But Nobody blames you. Um, due to time constraints, I haven't had a chance this week. But I have sort of read what's been going on. Finn, talk to me about Raw, but cut the crap out of it. Which okay. means we'll be talking about it for about five seconds, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, so Raw. Okay, so it's back down. No, I'm joking. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, opening promo um, was kind of garbage. Roman was there saying stuff. Heyman was there about talking about Brock Lesnar. Saying, oh, Brock Lesnar's here tonight. Oh, yay. Um, then Kevin Owens quit joke over there saying, oh, we're going to win the Rumble or whatever. Uh, no one cares. Um, but essentially, everyone came down. Once Roman was there, Brock Lesnar came down. It was like, oh, I was gonna get, everyone's going to get beaten up by Brock Lesnar. <laughs> and then Sami Zayn out of nowhere jumps on Braun Strowman. Um, and then everyone did a big fight in the ring. Brock Lesnar came in, suplexed everyone as he does. Of course, of he only has one is. move, two moves. Yeah, suplex and the F five. Yeah, F five Roman, and that was kind of it. Uh, they set up for the match for later tonight, later that night, which was uh, Jericho, Owens, and Strowman versus Roman, Seth, and Sammy. God Almighty! Yep, both guys again. <laughs> um, it's getting bad now. I mean, it, it, it is. In fact, it's it's getting worse than bad. It was bad. A couple of weeks ago, now it's just taking the piss. Yep. Um, this is why, boys and girls, I haven't watched Raw this week because I knew what was coming. Yeah. Um. Tell me, um, did we get Big E versus Titus O'Neil? Yep, we sure did. Uh, the Titus wanted uh 
one of New Day's spot in the Rumble, challenged Big E, and uh, yeah, Big E won. Oops, that was the thing. That was about to happen. <sighs> New Day. This is what happens. Yeah. I knew Day. they were gonna struggle. Nice. <laughs> I knew they were gonna struggle to find something for them to do once they lost them belts. Yeah. I didn't think it'd be this bad. <laughs> I know. Titus and Neil, the war people. Ugh. Why? <sighs> Titus and Neil's got to be on that release list. It's surely. <laughs> Has to be. I mean, I know he does. I know he's a great dad and all that sort of happy things that he does outside of WWE. But <laughs> he tried to hug Vince McMahon. So he's in the doghouse a little bit. Vince McMahon's yeah. not going to forgive him for that, I don't think. <laughs> I think Vince is going to hold that grudge. But, um, yeah, New Day, uh, I don't know what happens from here. That's the yeah, thing. I mean, it's a weird one. They're either going back into the title hunt or they split them up. Mm-hmm. That's when I fear for Xavier Woods. Uh, yeah. Well, that, uh, Xavier Woods has a ton of potential. Um, if Vince can go over his fact that it's quite short, <laughs> then it could be amazing. He could be a main eventer and do all sorts. Um, I mean, of course, I, I mean, I think we're maybe a while off a New Day split yet. Oh, yeah, unless they split them up and they end up having a triple threat at WrestleMania or something mm, garbage like that. I'm not. <laughs> I don't, don't do it. Mm. <laughs> 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 oh, I don't know. Raw's just terrible. It is. Um, Enzo and Gas had a match with Bruce Seven and Jinder Mahal. Sure. Um, it's making me dislike Enzo and Gas. <laughs> it's just, I'm bored of them now. Can we, we've seen it before. I know we say it every week, but it makes me happy to say it. <laughs> um, so, Finn, if you could tell me why this feud is a feud. Um, oh, because of uh, Enzo's penis. Penis! penis. Um, yeah, I tried to talk to my friend about this the other day, and he was like, yeah, but Rusev was just standing up for his woman. Yeah, Rusev's I'm, a good guy in this. <laughs> uh, yeah, he sort of is, but this doesn't change the fact that this all started because <laughs> Enzo had his dick out. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, yeah, a couple of good, but way too short. Cruiserweight matches, as always. Yeah, of course, they're always too short. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Give them more time, people. We did have one good match, actually. It's uh, Seamus and Cesaro versus the club. Good match. Um, lots of back and forth. The club. Uh, what what actually happened there? Oh, that's right. Uh, Seamus accidentally knocked out the ref. Uh, the club came in, hit the magic killer on Cesaro, pinned him. New ref came in, counted the three. New tag team champions, the club. <gasps> Or not. Oh. Uh, first ref comes to, he's like, ah, no, the disqualification, he wins by the EQ because Seamus punched me in the face or whatever. Um, and yeah. But I'm like, since when does that been a thing? <laughs> you saw this, the ref's decision is final. It's no backtrack. You don't backtrack on it. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. If you go back um, across years and years of uh, WWE television, yeah. you, you you could reverse a million decisions based on shenanigans. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's dumb. I was so happy to have the club as tag team champion. Just like, oh, finally, again, a shot, and it's going to be awesome. But nope. I've been reading about this. Um, I do think that their time is coming. I hope so. Very soon. Um, Cesaro and Sheamus are not a sustainable tag team for a long period, I don't think. No. I mean, they're very good. It's fun for now. Yeah, but not for a long period. I, If they have that match at the Royal Rumble, I see the club coming out of that as champions. I really hope so. Uh, and they can carry that feud on and and f- for a little while, but I do see the club finally winning the tag team titles that they should have won ages ago. Yeah. Cesaro and Sheamus shouldn't even have those belts right now. Yeah, um, it not. should be the club, um, and I'll be so happy when they do get it because they are absolutely awesome. Was Carl Anderson in trousers again? Um, I don't remember. I think it might have been. I think Vince is maybe trying to tell him something like <laughs> maybe stop skipping leg day or something <laughs> maybe so you, you got them skinny ass legs <laughs> like stop skipping leg day you will wear trousers as punishment yeah. I mean don't get me wrong he's not quite as bad as the miracle Mike Bennett in TNA who's who uh, my friend uh, who I speak to a lot um, always takes the piss out of because of how skinny his legs are oh yeah yeah <laughs> oh dear poor guy um, my friend clearly doesn't skip leg day yeah <laughs> clearly not <laughs> Uh, oh, something worth mentioning for sure. Uh, Kurt Angle is going to be in the Hall of Fame. Of course. Have of we course. not even... Have we skipped over this so <laughs> yeah. far? This is the best bit of news to, yeah. to come out of wrestling since the UK Championship Tournament. Excellent Definitely. news. So Excellent happy. News. Well deserved. Um, he tweeted sure. out that he's coming home. Yes, good. And he is. This is his home. Yes. And I hope I say, he has at least a few more matches left in him before oh, he retires. There's no way he's not going to wrestle. I hope so. He's not just going to retire. I hope not. <laughs> I mean, there's going to be a time to a, leg- uh, a Legends contract and I do imagine... Uh, he will fight. Yeah. Could he be a possible opponent for Undertaker? Mm, maybe. Uh, 
I'm going to talk about Undertaker in a little while. Okay. I've uh, I've been hearing rumblings, whether they're true or not is another thing. <laughs> but um, yep, Kurt Angle, at least being back in the WWE fold is enough for me. Yeah, me so too. happy, very cool, well deserved as well. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, they've got the main event, of course. Uh, Chris Jericho, Kevin Owens, and Braun Strowman versus Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and Sami Zayn. It's good that these guys are in the main event because it's rare <laughs> that they are. Uh, yeah, well, it's good to see Sami Zayn there at least. He's not always always in the main event. He's normally in mid card with Braun Strowman. Um, I don't know. Sure. Um, but yeah, cool. It's a fine match. Decent. Um, uh, Seth and Roman are going to power bomb Braun Strowman through a table. Uh, and Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho stopped him. Fight ensued. Uh, Jerry got pedigreed on the outside. Um, and then Kevin Owens attacked him, everyone with the chair, and then Power Bomb rode the announce table, and that was it. Oh. It was right. And that <laughs> was Monday Night Raw. Yep. The WWE's flagship television show. <laughs> yep. Garbage. The worst, one of the, probably the worst show they produce right now. The flagship. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it's, it's not even a contest. Yeah. Unfiltered with Renee Young is better. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, um, it's. As far as in ring product goes, Raw is easily the worst that they, they churn out. I mean, I don't even yeah. watch main event or superstars or whichever one it is they uh, didn't cancel. Yeah, I didn't know. Um, still I have going. no idea. Yeah. Um, it's, it's so bad. Um, and I do think we're going to have to tolerate it all the way up to WrestleMania. And then after WrestleMania, yeah. they need to hit that reset button. Yes. Finn Bal- Start afresh. Finn Balor needs to come back and dominate everything and fix everything. Yeah, I mean, when he spoke <laughs> at the uh, UK Championship Tournament, I was hoping he was going to say like, oh, I'm going to be in the Royal Rumble or something. But yeah. Yeah, cool. he didn't do that. But no. His arm seems to be okay though. He's not in the sling or anything. So. Yeah. Mm. I, I think he's, I don't think he's far away, but yeah, uh, I don't know how close not far away he is. Yeah, yeah. Um, please come back and save us, Finn. I mean, <laughs> if Finn wasn't injured, this whole nonsense with Jericho and Owens and Rollins and all this sort of stuff just wouldn't be happening because <laughs> yeah. Finn would be there and something different would be happening and you anticipate that it'd be much better yeah. because Raw started so strong. We don't need to go over it again because if you want if you want to hear us moan about Raw, just go back to the last 15 podcasts <laughs> yeah. and you can hear it all. Yeah, seriously. We have tore it a new one. Like yep. we, we really have. Um, Yeah, Raw sucks. Okay. Please get better. Just get better for fuck's sake. It's... it's it's your flagship show. Yeah. What the fuck are you doing? Oh, who knows? Let's talk about SmackDown. SmackDown was a lot better, as, as usually is. Woo, sir. <laughs> yeah. Breathe. Yeah. Um, so SmackDown. Good opening segment um, with Shane, AJ, and Cena, and The Miz. Um, lots of back and forth. Can't remember exactly what they said. Um, but it ended in uh, AJ versus The Miz happening uh, right now. Um, Which I'm fine with. Love yeah. it. Very cool. Um, so that happened. Good match. Ended in disqualification when AJ Styles threw the Miz into Cena, who was not there on uh, commentary. Uh, Cena like caught him and threw him into the barricade, and then disqualification apparently. Sure, which is fine. Um, and then AA uh, came into the ring, gave an AA to the Miz and to AJ Styles. Uh, Lord Cena wins. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then we had uh, Nikki Bella versus Natalia. Well, that's not a match. Um, it's kind of a. It started off in the ring. Nikki called out Natalia. And then uh, Natalia was in the crowd saying, oh, I'm, I'm tougher. I'm going to beat you up. <laughs> and then, uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Natalia went to the merch table and thought, oh, here's a Nikki Bella merch and John Cena merch. Where's the Natalia merch? And started pulling them all off and throwing it to the dustbin. It's nowhere, Natalia, because nowhere. nobody would buy it. <laughs> Probably. Although I kind of like her as a heel. It's kind of working all right. Would you wear a Natalia t-shirt? Sure wouldn't. Um, <laughs> but yeah, then Nikki came in and like, beat him up over the merch table in a fighting suit. Um, it was cool. There's a lot of brawling happening in this feud. There is. Um, <laughs> I don't. I mean, this is obviously going to end. There's going to be some sort of gimmick match. I'm sure that this is going to sort of uh, end in. But uh, yeah. I mean, you can't see me shrugging my shoulders and pulling a face. But <laughs> fine, I guess. This, if they've got nothing better to do with either of these two ladies, then fine. Let them brawl. Yeah, it's good. It's fine. Um, then we have uh, Dean Ambrose versus Randy Orton. Um, it was alright Randy <laughs> oh damn <laughs> <laughs> uh, so once again uh, Luke Harper called a distraction uh, he came in the ring and then it was like Bray was like no don't disqualification no and he went oh okay fine I'll get out and then Dean rolled up Randy and from behind I was distracted and won um, so more dissension in the Wyatts mm-hmm. break up incoming 
Uh, oh, for sure. I mean, um, I know that uh, it's going to be Luke Harper versus Randy Orton mm-hmm. next week to uh, oh, yeah, right, relieve yeah. the tension in the Wyatt family. Yes. Um, but the, the breakup's coming. For sure. I still think we're heading into WrestleMania um, with Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt. Yeah, definitely. Um, I see that happening. Uh, I do see the Wyatts breaking up completely. Mm. And Bray going on his own. Uh, all three of them do. I mean, Randy Orton going back to being oiled up, <laughs> baby face or heel, which I really decided to be at the time. Randy Orton. Uh, Luke Harper going on to do great things, I hope, because Hopefully. he's excellent. He is. And Bray Wyatt needs to now go to the uh, the top of the top of the ladder. Yes, I agree. For sure. Um, then, because we were in Memphis, we had a King's Court with Jerry Lawler. Sure. Who was shirtless for some reason. Sorry? Yeah, he was, yeah, he came down his ring gear and his cape and didn't, wasn't that much home. Um, so that's nice. So, what, the King had his nipples out? <laughs> yeah, I think he did, yeah. Um, God, why is he ring geared up? I have no idea. Because um, I guess that's how he did it back in the day. It's like a callback to that. It's fine. Sure. Should, should no, so he's never a playable character in the WWE games. Oh, yeah. Why? That's a good question. I don't know. Um, so his, his guest was the now heel, Dolph Ziggler. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Jerry basically said, basically called him a loser, saying, you got the do attitude, but you're still losing matches. Um, Dolph was like, hey, yeah, remember when you had that heart attack and almost died? Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Fun times. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, Dolph essentially threatened to kill the king. He said, oh, I'll finish what I started because he like showed, showed showed the clip from years ago because it was like him doing the elbow drops in that match which caused him maybe to have the heart attack. I don't know if he did or not. Definitely Wheels. not. I think it's just the king's old. I think, yeah, so yeah, it's probably more likely. Um, so Dolph, yeah, Dolph basically said he's going to finish the job. So oh. I'm going to kill you, king. Family-friendly <laughs> entertainment. Yeah, <laughs> PG uh, entertainment for fun for all the family. <laughs> yeah, you want you want to know this segment. Remember when um, the Edge was a special guest like uh, War General Manager or something? Yeah. And then the uh, I think uh, Rollins was there with the authority. He's basically going to curb stomp his neck or something. Yeah. Says, I'm going to murder Edge on live on television. So, yeah. Wait, what? It's, uh, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's a questionable storyline making. <laughs> yeah. Weird, weird decision. Um, so, yeah. Um, I think Jerry's called him a coward or something. And then he super kicked Jerry in the chest. Mm. Uh, seems smart. <laughs> and then uh, <sighs> JBL tries to get into the ring, tripped over himself, <laughs> and got stumbled over and, oh, and came into the ring and helped. Um, yeah, heel Dolph is heel. Okay, so <laughs> okay. Uh, now, because these people are getting involved in storylines, uh-huh. meaning JBL and King. the King. Yeah. Next week on SmackDown, <laughs> do we see Jerry the King Lawler versus Dolph Ziggler? Surely not. <laughs> Surely he can't. He can't, he can't wrestle now. He's had a heart attack. I, I think he does wrestle, like sort does of a uh, couple of local Memphis indie shows or something. Oh, Christ, maybe. <laughs> Do you uh, think this could happen? Do you think we could see the king back in a WWE ring taking on Dolph Ziggler? Uh, I hope not. <laughs> be... I'm going to make a prediction. Okay. I'm not going to make a bet because oh. I don't want it to fall on my ass. Um, <laughs> What's I the predict bet all about? next week, um, Jerry the King Lawler versus Dolph Ziggler. Okay. With JBL at ringside. JBL interferes. The king wins. <laughs> Dolph Ziggler goes ape shit. Beats both of them up after the match. Yeah, it could happen. You wouldn't surprise me. Um... I mean, I'd, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we see like a close night from hell or something. I could say we pissed off at Dolph. I don't know. Maybe King should do a pile driver off the top rope on Dolph Ziggler and end his career. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah, probably not. Um, yeah, that was a weird segment. Um, and yeah. Dolph Ziggler, too much of a hill maybe? Too much of a character change all of a sudden? Just out of nowhere? It, I, I mean, mean and it is all of a sudden as well. He <laughs> was like wiggling his ass and shaking babies' hands and what? kissing dads and <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's it. other way around uh, but yeah it's uh, I don't know I don't like Dolph Ziggler anyway as you know but uh, I'm fine with him being a heel and I sort of don't mind these kind of close in quote segments yeah but um, there's a line to be drawn here I think so um, yeah weird but we can just draw our main event which is cool it was uh, Becky Lynch versus Alexa Bliss in a steel cage <sighs> ooh for the uh, WWE Divas, Divas slash Women's Championship. Yes. Um, it was very good. It's a cool spot um, in the match. Um, so it ended when uh, Becky went to escape on the cage, but she was blocked by Gladys Chidora. <gasps> Just back. Um, that pesky, pesky Mexican luchador. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I think she like, kicked her out the, out the cage or something. 
And then Becky had the, the time locked in, but then she got Legion came back, uh, kicked in the face, uh, and left her hit with a DDT, and then won the match. And then they, but they're both, uh, Luchador and um, Alexa Bliss went to attack Becky Lynch. Uh, Becky Lynch got a full back, and she grabbed the mask off the Luchador, and, <laughs> come on please, it was Mickey James. We were right all along. Yes. Called it. <laughs> I was sort of hoping it was going to be Vince McMahon. <laughs> it's me, I'll stand. It was me, Becky. <laughs> me, Becky. It was me all along. <laughs> and then man. JR just like, comes out of nowhere and goes, ah, son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. I love that bit of comedy. <laughs> He's so good. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Uh, uh, but yeah, very cool to see Mickey James back. Yes, um, very as a heel, very cool, good stuff. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm pleased. We said it anyway. I yeah. mean, uh, we didn't know really who else it could be. Yeah, uh, and we knew that Mickey had signed to SmackDown. Um, anyway, it made sense. Or signed a WWE contract, and it made perfect sense. So that's good. Um, and it seems like she's going to be a heel, yep. which I'm fine with. Yep, me too. I'm looking forward to seeing where we go with it. But it's awesome again to see the women in the main event. Yes, happy times. Very cool. First ever steel cage match on SmackDown. Women's steel cage match on SmackDown. Making that history. Making history. <laughs> making that. Hi- did they use the words "making history"? I think so. Probably. They do it all the time. They love that. They love that phrase. They they <laughs> absolutely love that phrase. Um. This week the uh, WWE lost a legend. Oh yes. Superfly Jimmy Snooker. Super super superfly. Rest in peace. Yes. Um. I fondly remember Jimmy Superfly Snooker from. Uh, when I first started watching wrestling, I remember like my grandma babysitting me and uh, Superfly being one of these weird characters and my grandma being like, what the hell are you watching? I'm like, it's wrestling, it's Superfly. And yeah, so I mean, uh, great legend. Um, had a few problems recently. Yes. Unfortunately, but um, doesn't tarnish his legacy. No, I think so. And uh, it's a shame. It is. I hate when wrestlers die. I hate I when, know. you know, celebrities die and stuff like that. But wrestlers, when it's something that is... Uh, Close to your heart. Yeah, I believe it's someone you're watching go- growing up. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shame. I'm going to take two weeks off work when Hogan dies. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take it as family bereavement. Oh, dear. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's how I feel Hulk Hogan is. Yeah. Nice. No, but uh, yeah, sad times. Yes. Let's move on to um, one of our favourite. In fact, no, before that. Okay. I want to talk about The Undertaker. Oh, yeah. Now, okay. last week, I sort of said that Cena, Undertaker, was nailed on. Let me talk to you about Samoa Joe versus The Undertaker. Mm, Could see. Samoa Joe debut in the Royal Rumble and eliminate The Undertaker, setting that up? Uh, that'd be very really cool if it did. Um, yeah, because apparently we've heard, I've heard rumours that uh, they're going to call off the John Cena Undertaker thing. So yeah, so change mind. Um, and they're going to put him on War instead of SmackDown. So, I don't know, maybe... Potentially. Yeah. And that also, if, if you know, if Undertaker's going to Raw instead of SmackDown, I don't know why. Mm, that'd be weird. Yeah. Um, also, I mean, I also said I thought, you know, they'd maybe go for AJ versus Joe. Yeah, that'd be cool as well. Which would be awesome. But um, uh, I'm, I am I think I've read that they might go for Joe versus Undertaker. Mm. That would be awesome. It would be. It would be amazing. It would be, <laughs> I'd be all up for it. Plus, Joe would be... It, the incredible monster heel yeah, seriously. going into WrestleMania as well, especially if he's trying to take down The Undertaker. Yeah. <laughs> it would be amazing. So good. Uh, but that's my thoughts. What are you uh, What are you thinking? Yeah, I think it might be right there. Um, haven't given this too much thought, but uh, it certainly sounds plausible. And the has got to be coming in. It's got to be coming to the Rumble, surely. It's not been on NXT. It's not in any major feuds. It's, it's the Rumble, surely. Going to be a surprise you, entrant. You would imagine so. Yeah. Finn. Hello. This week's episode of the Games and Graps podcast and Graps. is brought to you by the letter J or Jimmy Snooker. Rest in peace, Jimmy. Yes. So if you're new to us, what we do each week is we read a, uh, a random wrestler's biography from the WWE encyclopedia. Yes. Uh, we pick a letter and we pick the most obscure thing we can find, beginning with that letter. Indeed. Uh, Judgment Day that's my review Joy Giovanni I used to love her Joy Giovanni oh, no, I remember her she was lovely yeah. I'll google it he said <laughs> Joy Giovanni I like that there's a Japanese women's tag team here called the Jumping Bomb Angels oh yeah I heard of them I think it's like one of those JBL things he says oh it reminds me of the Jumping Lovely Angels <laughs> uh, who, Jose Estrada yeah uh, 
have to be honest, I'm, uh, I'm sort of uh, skimming through here trying to find something ridiculous. <laughs> John Morrison. John Cena. John Cena. Joey Styles. JBL. John Morrison. Is that already? Jenny Mahal. Joey Mercury. This guy looks like he sucks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Job Squad. Let's see. Let's see what's the last one got here. Let's see if Right, I found one. Oh, nice. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jimmy Jack Funk. Okay. Jimmy Jack Funk. Uh, height, six foot. Okay. Weight, 242 pounds. From... Amarillo, Texas. Signature move was the bulldog. It's nice. I don't know why. <laughs> What's wrong? I don't know. I think he's one of the funks. Oh. Like one of the actual funk brothers. Oh right. But I don't want so I don't want to sort of tarnish so I've got a lot of time for the funk family. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to sort of tarnish that. <laughs> Can we just uh, Reading, reading. Let's leave that one alone. <laughs> Just because we're unsure. Because there's tons of J's in here. Joey Lola? Right, you know what? I'm going to read this one. Ridiculous. Okay. Jesse and Festus. Oh, yeah. Good old Festus. Much like the legendary hillbilly Jim before them, Jesse and Festus were a couple of country boys who didn't go messing with. Biscuits Wait, you don't go messing with. I can read. <laughs> Uh, Jesse, the brains of the operation, brought to the ring an accomplished amateur background, while Festus, the team's brawn, inexplicably transformed from a gentle giant into a beast every time he heard the ring bell. <laughs> After making their WWE debut in October 2007, Jesse and Festus made short work of many of the top units in ECW and on SmackDown including then WWE Tag Team Champions The Miz and John Morrison. Mm. The Miz. The Miz. In non-title action in early 2008. The duo remained championship contenders through the year, but Tag Team Goal was ultimately not, ultimately not meant to be. The team disbanded soon after when Festus was drafted to Raw. Yeah. And of course, Festus is now Luke Gallows. <laughs> yep. What a change. Ah, what a time to be alive. Biscuits and gravy. Yeah, that. that that's, Maybe a man. <laughs> I love that you know the words. Biscuits and gravy. <laughs> Maybe <me> all alone. <laughs> Can you imagine going into the recording booth? Right, Rob, what we need you to do today is sing Biscuits and Gravy in as many country music slash 90s way you possibly can. <laughs> yeah. Really? Is that what you want me to do? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Biscuits and gravy. Like, it just seems like such a ridiculous thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have to do some research here on the, uh, the, the funk one. Oh, yeah. Is... I've lost it now. I think I've lost it, yeah. I think it's Jimmy Wang Yang, who I saw, uh, I watched uh, Where Are They Now on him. Oh, uh, yeah. He's driving, a, uh, he's driving a, a party bus. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cool. He seems like a nice guy as well. Yeah, he does, yeah. And everyone loves him when he comes back to visit. <laughs> I was like, oh, I like Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Wang Yang back in the day. Now... I'm not sure if this is a WWE made up funk or whether he's an actual one so that's right. why I'm going to do some research on it first okay um, I'll read it to you anyway <laughs> Jimmy Jack Funk was crazy even by funk standards for decades fans feared the wild funk brothers hailing from Amarillo, Texas Terry and Haas made a career out of their maniacal in-ring actions little did anyone know however there was a young funk back home at the Double Cross Ranch who was even crazier in 1986 Terry and Haas finally Introduced WWE audiences to Jimmy Jack, their uncontrollable and unpredictable brother. Yeah. Man managed by Jimmy Hart, Jimmy Jack kept with the funk ways by wearing a cowboy hat and boots to the ring in addition to his classic funk garb. He also sported a, a mask over his eyes and noose around his neck. Interesting. Well, the, the picture was what enticed me to it in the first place. Yeah. According to the funks, Jimmy Jack was an amazing amateur wrestler who only missed competing in the Olympics because of an American boycott of the Moscow Games in 1980. Right. Unfortunately for Jimmy Jack, his supposed amateur success never equated to wins in a WWE ring as he frequently fell short in matches against the likes of Black Jack Mulligan and Hillbilly Jim. Now, I'm going to have a look here. Okay. While, while I'm thinking about it. <clears throat> Jimmy Jack Funk. Not Jommy Jack Funk. <laughs> like Google, like uh, my typing has just said. <laughs> Yeah, 
I don't think he's one of the Funk Brothers, if I'm being honest. No. Ferrin Bar Jr. is his real name. Yeah. It's a WWE creation. I he is the son of wrestling promoter Sandy Barr and the older brother, or older brother of wrestler Art Barr. So no, he's not a Funk Brother. Yeah. So we could have had him and he would have counted. That is typical WWE making family members up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in the eighties, you would have just gone amazing. And yeah. You'd have carried that knowledge on throughout the years until you realised that. WWE sucks. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> this week's episode of the Sunny and Finn Graps and Games, Games and Graps podcast. There you go. That's <laughs> I got it there. I got there. Yeah. Older Lesnar. habits. Yes, absolutely. We Old habits that are brand new today. Yes. Was brought to you by the letter J. Yes. Okay, so this has been episode 48 of the Games and Graps podcast. That's the one. Formerly the Sunny and Finn show. Mm-hmm. We are now part of Daydreamer Gaming. Yes. And we are Daydreamer Gaming's weekly video game and wrestling podcast. And we can be found across podcast services everywhere. Everywhere. Each and every Friday. Yes. Okay. Go follow us on Facebook mm-hmm. and Twitter. Yep. And Instagram. Mm-hmm. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, on your Xbox One, and any other podcast service that you may use. Yes. Go to youtube.com forward slash Sunny Finn Play for me and Finn being fairly bad and sometimes good at video games. Mostly bad. You can also find Daydreamer Gaming on YouTube. We are a growing community with a lot of content creators that uh, is blossoming the exact way I wanted it to. Yes, it's good. But for now, this has been episode 48 of the Games and Graps podcast. I'm Sunny. I'm Finn. And we will speak to you next week. Goodbye, guys. Thank you so much. Goodbye.